I'm exhausted. Oh, come I need on. I need a day off. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly uh two a day grind, but it was good to get out there and see the Eagles get started. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast with Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. First day of Eagles training camp, first practice of Eagles training camp in the books. 58-minute practice started at 10 a.m., ended at 10.58 a.m., but still plenty to learn from it. We talked to Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni before the practice, talked to a few players after it. So we're going to try to do these podcasts just about every day of training camp, and I'm excited about it. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Um, A former Eagle, people might remember, he's before my time, Ken Dunek, uh, tweeted, I tweeted the practice was over. It was 58 minutes, and he tweeted back when when Vermeil was the coach. 58 minutes was our warm up, <laughs> but things That's have true. changed. Yeah, that They've is true. But things have changed, and uh, we'll we'll talk about some of those changes as we go through here. Yeah, it was fun to be out there, though. It's, it is always exciting just to see it on the field for the first time. And I know that there's a long way to go, and uh, I, I think there's some fans who get frustrated about how much analysis there is on these days of practice, but it's our job and it's fun. And uh, judging by the reaction, people want to see this stuff. Yeah. And I I mean, I would just caution, don't make too much of it. If a guy has a bad day, it doesn't mean he's not going to make the team. If a guy has a great day, it doesn't mean he is going to make the team, but it's certainly fun to watch and see what guys can string together a bunch of good days. And conversely, uh, you can learn a lot about players who who have some bad days. How do they respond to it? Um, you know, do they? I mean, we we you can see if a guy is really struggling, it, and that's what I want to know. It's going to happen to most players. How do they respond to it? How do they react to it? Do they you know do they let it get to them? Do they build on it? Do they bounce back? And then that's what we start to watch today. Yeah, and uh, it, it's it's always fun. We got down there pretty early. We were the first ones out of the field. Always got to be the first one out the field. Yeah, we weren't even. I don't think we were even allowed to be there. Like security wasn't. They were like looking around. Are these guys allowed to come out here yet? Yeah, but uh, yeah, you want to get out there early, see who the first player. I think the first guys on the field were uh, Reed Sinnett and uh, Carson Strong, I believe. Uh, Milton Williams was out there pretty early too, um, and then BG was the first kind of veteran guy to come out. Um, Jalen Hurts was- said. Jalen Hurts said he and AJ Brown. Got to the facility at 6.30 this morning to work out together. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, it was funny because BG, you know how BG is. He was over signing autographs for some kids, and uh, he was supposed to be doing a drill with one of the trainers with uh, Milton Williams and Javon Hargrave, and he's over there signing autographs and taking pictures. This is before practice, and they're, like, yelling at him, hey, BG, get over here. But, uh, but they got their work in. All right, so we figured we would kind of first go through, we alluded to it a little bit, but the structure of these practices, it's a little weird, uh, the, at least the schedule. They practiced on on Wednesday today for 58 minutes. Tomorrow, Thursday, is a walkthrough. Then they'll practice again on Friday and Saturday. This is new. I mean, this is a, as similar as a lot of training camp is going to be. The actual schedule is a little different this year. Yeah, and it's really interesting, and and Nick was asked about it. They don't practice more than two days in a row at any point this summer. Uh, the third day is a walkthrough. It's And a walkthrough, it's still a practice, but it's half speed. Um, you know, they're out there in shorts, and they're, they're, it's, it's more of mental reps. Uh, I had a coach once call walkthroughs a uh, meeting on the field. It's like a meeting on the field. So, um, it, it's not putting as much stress on your body. And they, Nick quoted research that showed that soft tissue injuries, in his words, shoot up on the third day in a row of practice. And that that's when those, those injuries, you know, because your body is now kind of fully taxed after two days of work. And on that third day, I guess you're more susceptible. He quoted research. We don't, we don't know who did the research, but he, he that's what he said. Someone and told him. Kind of makes sense. What's that? Someone told him. Someone told him. So, um, so all research works these days. So I heard this it is, somewhere. He said not just with us, but around the league. So somebody has done research, and this is what analytics is. And um, 
So that third day, they're doing a walkthrough, and they've got four of them scheduled between now and the end of uh, camp. And um, he did say, and I found this really interesting, that the net gain is going to be – there's going to be a net gain in time on the field with the walkthroughs because it's going to allow them to have longer practices, presumably the first day back, the first day after a walkthrough. So Friday they're going to practice after a walkthrough, and presumably I think they have different colors. There's a red day, a yellow day. The longer days are the, the green days, the longer, more intense practices. So the thinking is if you have a, if you have a walkthrough Thursday – you know, you come back refreshed and invigorated and, and your body is recovered enough to have a longer practice. And he said the net total of time spent on the field is going to be higher this year than last year. So found that interesting. Um, it's all about recovery. It's all about keeping them off the feet, off their feet as much as possible. And he said it's a balancing act. You know, you're you're balancing what the doctors and the strength and performance staff and the trainers want which is to keep these guys off their feet with you know his quote was i have to i have to make sure the team's ready to play so he said he's constantly balancing making sure they're prepared enough with doing what the trainers and the and the weight staff and the uh, performance staff want which is to to limit them to the least possible time on the field so this is look this isn't unique to nick sirianni and the eagles i mean every team is looking for ways to reduce injuries to keep guys off their off their feet as much as possible while still getting them ready for the season. Uh, emphasis on meetings and watching film and mental prep, meeting with coaches. Um, this is the way the league is going. And, you know, you're not going to win a Super Bowl if half your team is on IR, although the Eagles came pretty close in 17 and had a lot of prominent guys on IR. Uh, Darius Slay was asked, I'm sorry, Slay was asked about all this. And he said, um, he said, uh, this game is about working hard, but you've also got to protect our bodies. Uh, soft tissue issues, soft tissue issues come with a lot of running, and our coaches and staff do a great job taking care of our bodies. We were the least injured team last year, and that's what you need. You can't win games if you're not healthy. So um, interesting stuff, and uh, you know I think teams are just going to continue to look for ways to kind of balance out keeping guys healthy and keeping them prepared. Yeah, and the Eagles aren't afraid to be the first team to really do it. You know what I mean? Like, they're not looking around the league saying, well, no one else is doing this. They have no problem being innovative in a way and, and trying to to get to this point first where you say, hey, you know, if if there is a way to limit those soft tissue issues, then you have to try to do it. Yeah. Uh, and the players it's fun to it. say, by the way. I know. I know it was like a little haiku, not a haiku, but a little rhyme. Um, I mean, the players like it, and you I'm know, sure they B, do. <laughs> and but you know, I think it was BG who said, you know, when when you are on the field, you're you want to get the most out of that time, so you're going 100 percent every snap and every rep. So, and what I will say is, these practices have a little shade of the chip practices, just in like how quickly they get from drill to drill. You know, it's not they're not as long and they're not as frantic as the I mean, chip kelly practices were like they were insane but they were breathless yeah yeah but these are similar in a way like they're there's not a lot of standing around so it's i know it's a 58 minute practice but it is a compact 58 minutes and they're not it's not like they're sitting around between drills it's literally like get that rep done hurry up and finish that rep the field's being used now for something else and so you, it, in a way, like I can catch my, like I'm trying to catch up with my notes at times because like something will happen and you're trying to like, what just happened? But before you can even realize what, who that player was, he's already on the other field doing something else. So uh, I think that shouldn't be lost. It's not like, you know, if a Doug Peterson practice was 58 minutes, they would have gotten nothing done. That's true. Uh, and I, again, I mean, it's a good tempo, but most practices are going to be longer than 58 minutes. This is the first practice of the year. Um, you know, it's a ramp up period. You, I would think Friday they'll probably go um, somewhere from an hour and a half to 145, I would think. And it sounds like that's going to be a green practice. Um, so we'll, we'll see. But uh, they're not going to I mean, I don't think they're going to ever go over two hours. Uh, but they do seem to get like even today's practice was 58 minutes, but I thought it was a good practice. I thought it was they were efficient. They got stuff done. Um, the, the, offensively, they look pretty, pretty crisp. So 
uh, interesting um, changes and definitely something that will keep you guys apprised of every day, you know, how long they go and how intense it is. And, you know, obviously the walkthroughs are close to the media and fans. So uh, we won't be doing pods after those. I think there's four of them. Uh, but we'll fill you in as uh, as as we go. Last year, the first nine days of training camp, they had eight full practices. This year, they have six the first ten days. So it's a different animal. It's a little different. Uh, it was a good practice. So it was red zone work on Wednesday, which is they they worked red zone on day one last year too. There's no like the first day of practice. You know, I always think in my head like, oh, they might not do much today, but that's they are. I mean, it was a, a pretty busy practice. Let's go through some of my practice observations. I'll drop on the site right now so you can go ahead and read those later, but we'll fill you in on some of the things here. Uh, housekeeping first, Rube. Three guys placed on the active pup list. Richard Rogers, Brett Toth, Kyrie Jackson. Uh, they still count against the roster, but uh, basically this active pup is the precursor to possibly being put on the regular season pup list. You can't be on the regular season without being on the active. So that's Brett where they Tooth, are with those guys. Brett Tooth was out there, which was odd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he's coming back from the ACL. Uh, so is Tyree Jackson. So yeah. I, I would think both of those guys have a good shot to land on the pup list. And by the way, the pup has changed this year. You only have to miss four games as opposed to six if you end up on the reserve list. So we'll see what happens there. A few new players, Jaden Graham, the tight end, Cameron Tom, the center, and Lance Lenore, Lenoir, 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 is that it? The receiver played at the in the U, USFL. Uh, three new players they released: Jared Williams. So always shuffling the roster. They'll keep doing that. Based and on think, a lot of injuries, will dictate that. I think that we owe it to our listeners and viewers to let everyone know that Jaden Graham's going to wear forty-six, Cameron Tom's wearing sixty-six, and Lance Lenoir is wearing thirty-four. Is that making fun of me for putting that in the observations? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I figured that. Uh, no, people <laughs> care about numbers. They do. Yeah. And, and think about it. If you're a tight end and they give you 46, not looking great. <laughs> it's, it's not. You want to at least get close to the 80s. Yeah. Uh, all right. Some players mispracticed. Jason Kelsey, COVID. They, it looked like they had a little bit of COVID going around. Uh, Kelsey mispracticed. Carrick Wheatfall, the receiver, mispracticed uh, in what they're calling COVID progression, which means they either still have it or they had it and they're getting over it. Fletcher Cox and Anthony Harris were listed as limited in their COVID progressions. Fletcher said he's feeling better. He talked to us. Kelsey was out there and Fletcher was out there. So mm-hmm. they're obviously still – they're fine. They're just kind of recovering. Yeah, Zach Pascal listed with a non-COVID illness, so he missed his first day. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, team's pretty healthy going into training camp. The new practice regimen's really working, Dave. <laughs> Brandon Graham told us he has no restrictions. That's a good sign. He was out there full go. And he didn't have a brace. Um, he didn't have uh, – I mean, he, it, it's been, obviously it's been a long time. And he said something – I mean, he said that the knee was worse than this. He said that, makes that sense. Knee- I mean, a micro fracture in – 2011 is is probably worse than an Achilles tear, tear in 2022. Yeah, and I mean, he I think he was asked about this about you know he said when he first heard Achilles he's like woo uh, he does that in every every. What was he like? Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that again. I, I think I strained my abductor, but uh, he he said when he heard he first heard Achilles he's like oh that's that's the one that nobody wants to get, uh, but they have made. Tremendous strides. I mean, they made tremendous strides in surgery for all these things, ACLs. I remember when Wes Hopkins was out two years with the ACL. Now you guys coming back like after the bye week. So like seven months or like, no, we're good to go. Yeah. So um, he looks great. And that's such a big question mark for this team. No restrictions is really good news. Absolutely. Um, let's get into some of the depth chart stuff. Isaac Samalu got the, uh, the first reps at right guard. And they mixed Sua Opeta in there after him. But my sense of that is that's more of bringing Isaac along slowly. I don't know this for a fact, but I think that's more bring Isaac along slowly from that list Frank injury than it is real competition at that spot. Yeah, I think that's pretty clearly the case. Um, they've been 
really effusive in their praise of Isaac. It doesn't sound like there's a competition at right guard. I think it's his job. And if he stays healthy and plays like he has when he has been healthy, he's going to be the right guard. Yeah, and if there was a real competition, I think Jack Driscoll would probably be the guy to rotate in and not sue him. Jack Driscoll was the second team right tackle. Right. You agree with that? Yeah. Uh, top receivers, no surprise, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, Jalen Rager working with the twos. Had a really good day for what that's yes, worth. And that's that could be a trap here a little bit with Rager. He, he might look okay against the twos and threes. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, it's just encouraging that he looks good against anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, you know, again, I don't put a whole ton of stock in it, but he looked confident. He caught the ball. Um, he got in the end zone a couple times. And, you know, you just try to build on it and don't put too much stock in it, but at least he caught a couple balls. And considering where he was at the end of last year, it's got to be somewhat encouraging. Yeah, uh, Reed Sinet. The incumbent third-string quarterback, Carson Strong, they split reps as that third-string quarterback. You would think if Strong's healthy, he's going to win that job, but Sinek got the first crack at it. Yeah, and again, that could be that old deference to the veteran. Yeah, Um, Carson Strong's an intriguing guy to me. Um, I also thought it was interesting that when Carson and – and Reed Sinet were out on the field, and they forgot a, a big giant bag of gear. It was Reed Sinet who had to run back to the to the uh, to the to the lock to the weight room actually, and then get the bag and run it back while Carson Strong just kind of waited around. Usually, the rookie gets that duty, so that could be a sign of something. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. That's that's kind of an interesting third string quarterback is a kind of irrelevant but interesting competition. That, that guy. Doesn't play that often, but occasionally he does, so keep an eye on it. Yeah, and whoever wins that job could end up being the backup next year. Yeah, that would be true. You're saying if Jalen's not here, he would be backing up Minshaw? Minshaw? No. Minshaw? 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 My, I just mispronounced his name, and I don't know why. <laughs> What did you think about Jalen Hurts today? I thought he had a solid day. It wasn't perfect. He had a few throws he'd probably want back. But overall, I thought it was an encouraging first day for him. Yeah, I, I did too. He had the one, uh, I think, Epsi picked off. Yeah, that uh, was his worst pass of the day. He held it yeah. too long. He underthrew it, and Epps cut off that route. I thought he put the ball where he wanted to for the most part. Uh, I thought he delivered it where he, where he wanted to. I thought it was a good start. Yeah, and in the red zone, I mean, things are a little more condensed, and he handled himself well. That one back shoulder throw to Quez Watkins was probably the play of the day. I mean, I'll give it a tip of my cap to Quez on a little bit more than Jalen, but uh, Jalen put it where he could catch it. Yeah, um, yeah, he had, he had a bunch of nice throws, and and uh, th- I mean, the red zone. I think the thing you're looking for from Jalen is, I mean, the red zone. You you just can't afford to stand around and wait and, and deliver the ball. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be quick in your thinking and your processing and, and, uh, and deliver the ball quickly and efficiently. And I thought he did that. Yeah. There was one play uh, and I didn't even make my notes, but I just remembered it there where I think it was Quez got open. Jalen was already, he had already taken off before then, which is always a fine line for a quarterback like Jalen because he can run and, Sometimes in the red zone, you can't wait for the play to develop. It's it's a little tricky because he waits there. He probably has a chance to complete that pass, but it opened up late, and I don't think he saw it and he took off. But I didn't ding him too bad for that one. No. No, I give him a solid uh, solid B for today. Yeah, B, B plus, I thought. I thought yeah, it was B+. pretty good. Yeah. Um, defensive scheme, and it's something where we'll, we, we didn't learn everything from day one, and I'm sure they're going to try a lot of different things throughout the summer. But it was – a very healthy mix of three, four, and four, three, which is kind of what we anticipated. Yeah, um, it was interesting to see it, to see it evolve, and to see where guys were lining up. And you got into some of it in your observations. Uh, BG talked about how much fun it is playing. Uh, you know, he hasn't played in, he hasn't played in a three four since the old uh, since the old days, the Billy Davis days. Um, uh, he seems to like it. I don't think he liked it the first time around, but. They have the personnel to do it. It's it's pretty. It was pretty obvious as they were building this defense 
they're bringing in guys who are versatile enough to do both, and they have that. And um, again, we I, mean, I think we touched on this before, but you need smart guys to to learn two defenses. Essentially, you're you're learning two different schemes, and you got to be able to play them and go back and forth and switch and play different positions. And uh, you better better be ready for that. Uh, it's kind of fun to see him in a, in an odd front. Yeah. And, you know, there were some other guys like Milton Williams to me is probably the the best multidimensional lineman they have. And, and I'm not saying like the best player, but the best suited to play in both defenses. Oh. He really looks to me like a three, four end. But Did, he doesn't just, he look leaner? Did you get um, a good look at him? I didn't. It, that didn't strike me, actually. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll have that in the back of my mind for day two. Uh, but no, I, I think he's he's like he can easily switch from three four end to four three interior with no problem. We saw yeah. uh, Sweat and BG as stand up rushers. We saw Jordan Davis at the nose, but also at the three tech. Uh, we saw Hassan Reddick drop a little more than honestly I'd like to see him drop. That but was that's part of training camp. It's like. Maybe they were working on that today. Maybe that's what they want them to do today. And that's why it's like, I, I think for in terms of schematic observations, the totality of it's going to be more than what they do on any given day. Agreed. Yeah. Whereas like some things matter more day to day. Like, you know, Jalen had a great day. You, you can kind of quantify that, but what they're doing schematically on defense on day one might be completely different than day two. Right. Right. And, that's why you just try not to make too much of any one day uh, and any one, you know, result. Uh, no Anthony Harris today. So I found it interesting. Uh, Marcus Epps was one of the starting safeties. They had Kayvon Wallace ahead of Jaquiski Tart. I think that's kind of a not a veteran deference, but deference to a guy who's been here. And they're probably still trying to catch Tart up on, on this defense a little bit. I have a prediction that's going to change really soon. <laughs> Yeah, Kayvon didn't have a strong day. Right. Yeah, yeah I, you're probably right on that. Another interesting depth chart thing, uh, second team defense, Mac McCain was the cornerback opposite Zach McPherson. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, so he starts out, and again, it doesn't mean he's going to finish there, but he gets the first crack at that. You know, we, when we, we talked the other day about all those – young corners they have, and he's at the top of the heap right now. I, I mean, McPherson was going to be one of them just because he was a fourth-round pick last year. Um, but we you know, we didn't really know who the next guy would be. Would it be Tate Gowan or who? And then Josiah Scott seemed to be getting reps in the slot there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I thought McCain played well. I thought Zach McPherson had a good day um, as well, good start. Um, you know, I think you mentioned your in, in your OBS the, um, the near – the near um, spectacular one-handed catch for Devante. It was right in front of me. And Zach McPherson had great coverage on that play. Great coverage. Yeah, so I thought that was that was that was like the rep of the day. I thought because Devante almost made an incredible catch. That would have been one of those catches where if he makes it, that's all anyone's talking about. Yeah, although there wouldn't have been any video of it because oh, the Eagles would have had it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they might have released it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it was a uh, it was a hell of an effort. But um, Zach McPherson was right there. It's like wow. I was. Uh, it, it was a good throw. Um, Hard to get beat deep when you're on the ten yard line. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, you know he's. I mean, he was physical on that rep. Um, yeah, he, he's he's got a shot, and it was it'd be fun to watch him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, McCain and, and uh, Zach McPherson, your second team corners. Yeah, and he's he's the next guy up if there's an injury. You know, he's, he's going to play, so yeah, they could use that. Uh, punt returners today, there were five of them. Jalen Rager, Greg Ward, Britton Covey, Quez Watkins, and Len Wah. <laughs> yeah, no Devin Allen. No Devin Allen. Yeah, I mean, maybe Devin Allen's kind of a kick return guy. Doesn't yeah, help we'll him see. if he's not returning punts. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um... He did. He was practicing, so I guess his hamstring's okay. I guess he's, his hamstring's fine. Uh, Devin Allen said he gained ten pounds, um, not since, not since he ran, but over the course of the summer. That would have been tough. 
he ran I know it's like people were like how do you how do you gain 10 pounds in a week I think he kind of the whole point was try to become you know build a football body and he you know if you have to hurdle with a couple extra pounds he's still lean and you know great shape but it kind of tells you how committed he is to this it's not like I'm just going to go there and try to make the team if I don't want to go run more track meets I mean he's he's given this his full you know full attention and I think that's important he has yeah, that to. that struck me a little bit when you mentioned that because I don't know I'll be honest if I'm him I don't think I'd do that I mean if I'm about to run world championships and I think I have a good chance to win and he should have I mean, he presumably did have a, a decent shot to win or at least place. Um, to put on weight, looking ahead to football, is the Eagles are probably happy about it. Yeah, he said he went from 185 to 195. So, um, I mean, it's possible he – yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much that would slow him down. I mean, he ran the 1284 in late June, so he had to be in that process already. Yeah. And he ran – 1309 in the trials jogging so it didn't seem to slow him down uh, but yeah it does it does tell you that he's serious about this uh we talked about the marcus epps play that was the best defensive play of the day uh, but the uh, close one was the tj edwards strip aj brown called well like a maybe five yard pass and tj came in there and ripped the ball away TJ is going to play for this team, and uh, he's getting first team reps. He's going. He's going to get first team reps all summer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's gotten better every year. He's experienced. He's solid. He's physical. He's really smart. He's a leader. Um, I think my first inclination when they, you know, added a couple linebackers was TJ's just not going to play that much anymore. He's going to be a special teamer, but seems pretty clear that they still feel strongly about him as a defensive player. Yeah, and Kobe Dean did not work with the first team on day one. I was curious about that. I think we're going to see him mix in over time. I think yeah. eventually we'll see him with the first team on, on some days. Yeah, we, we will see. You would, you would, uh, yeah. you would I didn't notice that. him. Like People were asking me about him specifically. I didn't notice him one way or the other. Yeah, I didn't, he didn't do anything that made you take notice, but um, yeah, we'll see. Early. Yeah, it really is. How about the, uh, the interviews? Oh, uh, let, let me just, I'm just going to add one thing. Cause you, you mentioned it in number nine on your obs. Yeah. Um, it, it was almost another interception when miles double caught a, a pass. And, you know, we've talked so much about what miles has to do and he ended up catching the ball, but it was, you know, it's just a short swing pass and he, he caught it and then just bobbled it. Like nobody hit him, nobody touched him. Um, I think there was a defender there who, if if the ball had gone either way, could have, could have been. It was almost. I wrote about a different play, but I remember that one too. Okay, he ran into Jalen on one, and the ball like popped up in the air. Oh yeah, yeah. And Brandon Graham nearly picked it off. This was like out in the flat, and uh, and then you know he 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 took the ball and smacked himself in the in the head. I, I, I mean. You just can't do that. He did end up catching the ball and got some yards, but I mean, we got it. He's got to get back to rookie year receiving Miles Sanders or, or close to it. He can't be can't be double catching a, a, a short swing pass. Um, and yet Gainwell, I mean Gainwell, just caught the ball great again. Uh, had a couple. I think what do you have? A couple touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, catches it and runs with it. He looks he looks solid. He's a good receiver. Yeah, he's their best receiving back, and it's not particularly close. No, you're right. Boston might be second. Yeah, no, definitely a second. Yeah. Anything else that stood out from practice before we move on? You know, um, Grant Calcaterra made a really nice catch. Oh, I meant to mention that. Yeah, that was a great grab. I think it was from (laughs) Minshaw. (laughs) (laughs) It was. That was a good throw from Minshew. And Calcaterra got up there to catch it. He didn't have to leap, but he was – yeah, he extended himself. And yeah, it was a high ball, but he got it. Yeah, it was kind of a little eye-opening for a kid's first practice. Looked like a receiver catch. Yeah, it was a nice play. I mean, I don't know, he's, he's been able to catch the ball in college, and you know, it's nice to see him make that play there. Day it'll one. be interesting to see. That stall had caught a couple passes. He did, but that'll be interesting to see how that 
kind of competition plays out because Kakatar is probably going to flash more. You know, but that's going to draw eye, our eye more than maybe the team if they're looking at other things, if they're looking at blocking, right. if they're looking at knowledge of the offense. I think both those guys are going to play a little bit. I, I don't know if it's going to be a clear-cut number two. Yeah, and I think you made the point a while ago that you can't just play stall when you need a blocker and play Calcutta when you need a receiver because you can't telegraph what you're going to do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, stall has to be able to catch the ball, and Calcutta has got to be able to give some kind of effort blocking. Uh, if they can do that, um, you know, we're in business. How about the interviews today? Anything that really stood out to you from – we got a surprise Howie Roseman visit today. Yeah, it was weird, Tommy, for that because there's not a lot to ask him right now. I mean, yeah, well, he did it last year at the beginning of camp, but I think that was mostly to answer COVID questions. Right, right. Um, there's nothing from Howie, really. There's really no roster cap stuff to talk about right now. He was asked about the safety position. I know everyone's worried about Jesse – not worried, but fixated on Jesse Bates, but nothing there. No. Um, I thought uh, – I mean, we talked to we talked to um, AJ Brown, who was um, he's great to talk to. He's really fun, mm-hmm. fun guy. Um, you know, talked about uh, how what time did he get there? Him and Jalen got there at six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. That's a.m. <laughs> uh, to get started, just because they wanted to be there. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he's really positive, really positive energy around him. You know. Kind of yeah, guy you and like. he's pretty honest. Yeah, he, he was asked about you know because he's on social, he's pretty active on social media, and he was uh, you know he defended Jalen Hurts a few weeks ago against a report, and uh, but he was asked like when you see things about yourself, how do you react to it? And he admitted he's like I'm a real person. He's like if I see thirty positive comments and one negative comment, sometimes. That negative comment will hit me a little harder. I'm paraphrasing there, but yeah. that's anyone who's on social media understands that, and uh, I, I appreciate his honesty there. And uh, him getting a chance to work with Jalen, I think, is still really fun for him. The novelty of that hasn't worn off yet. No, that's for sure. Um, Slay was great again. Um, talked about how high he is on Zach McPherson. Uh, Called him the heir apparent to him. Said when I when I'm gone, he's he's taken over for me. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, you know, we just think of Zach McPherson as a fourth round second year guy who hasn't played that much. Um, Slay's really high on him, and uh, so that was interesting to hear. Slay sang some uh, Chris Brown, little Chris Brown. I heard he said, that he said uh, people confuse him for Chris Brown when they hear when they hear him sing, and uh, so that was interesting. Um, he, it, you know, was interesting. He talked about the walk. You know, he was asked about the walkthroughs, and he said, you know, they're actually really valuable. He said walkthroughs. He said it's not like you're just out there, you know, doing nothing. He said well, the thing I love about walkthroughs is that when you're at practice, you can't run a play over. Like if you have a bad play, you're moving on to the next play. He said, if you have a question, if something doesn't really work well, um, just run it again. He said, you know, because you're not on that that timer, you're not on that clock. You know, you know. You're, it's it's a more casual approach, I guess. So I thought that was interesting. He says he gets a lot out of walkthroughs, and and uh, he seemed it seemed genuine. He seemed to really mean it. He said he, that's that's really good work because it's a it's that combination of the metal work because you're going at half speed, you can really kind of think things through, and and you're still out there physically running through the play. So um, that was interesting because I kind of tend to think of oh they're doing a walkthrough tomorrow. That's they're not doing anything. But he said we you know we are getting good work out of that. Yeah, and sometimes walkthroughs become jog throughs. Like, it's not just literal walking all the time. Yeah. Um, now there are times where they're not allowed to be jog throughs, and mm-hmm. um, you know, because if you're doing a walkthrough like before a game or um, the day before a game, like there's there's different levels of walkthroughs, and and all this stuff is is legislated by the CBA, and there's actually cameras mounted at the Novacare complex that the NFL can monitor. That's true at every practice facility um, or training camp facility, wherever a team is. And if you're doing a walk, like if you have to do a walk, because there's certain days you can't practice. You can only practice X number of days in a row. So if you're having a walkthrough on the day that you're not practicing, 
nobody can run. You can't have a guy running. That's why you'll see a coach, if you're there, yell at him. If a guy's jogging between drills, you got to stop running because, I mean, if somebody – if somebody, if a player complains about it, you can he files a, a complaint with the union. You know, a team could presumably lose practice days. You could even lose a draft pick if it happens enough and get fined. So, um, there's there's at some walkthroughs, there's only so much you can do. It's 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 all spelled out in the CBA, which is a free download on the NFLPA website. It's good reading if you're into this stuff. Um, I had the old one printed out in a binder. I haven't done it with the new CV. It's like 600 pages. I'm aware. Yeah, it took a while to print. Dave's different. What, did you go to a Kinko's or did you do it in your house? I did it uh, in the newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, at least it wasn't your your uh, your toner. Yeah, imagine like a, one of those like, you know, printers that parents have. I say yeah. parents because I... My parents have a printer. I don't have a printer. And I feel like there's a generation of people who have printers. Yeah. And people stop buying printers. Right. Right. I, I don't really have a need for a printer. My parents have, like I think they have like an old line printer. <laughs> Everyone's parents have a printer and we all still use it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I don't use it. I don't really have a need to print anything out. Every once in a while, there'll be something that like I need to have a piece of paper for. Okay. I'll let you know next time I need to print something out. You can print it for me. Got anything else? No, it was fun being out there. It was a good start. And uh, next practice is Friday. Next podcast is Friday. And keep you guys surprised of everything that happens. We will do that. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please do us a favor. Rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. Feel free. We're going to have a bunch of podcasts over the next few weeks. Feel free to uh, let us know what you guys want to hear about. We'll keep an eye on some players if you have some ideas. We'll happily take them. For Ruben Frank, I'm Dave Zangara. We'll talk to you soon.